Did you know that Isaac Newton originally saw there were six colours to the rainbow, but said there were seven because it matched up more perfectly with the notes on a musical scale? Now, visible light and the colours of the rainbow are part of what's called the electromagnetic spectrum. They are electromagnetic waves. The first thing they have in common is they all travel at 300 million metres every single second. That's the speed of light. And um, they also don't need a medium to travel in. They can travel through vacuums. Now, you need to know all the different parts, which hopefully you'll know already. So we start off with radio waves. Then we've got microwaves, infrared, visible, ultraviolet, x-rays, and gamma rays. Now, to help you remember them in order, uh, there are a few different phrases you can use, um, like mnem mnemonics, to help remember uh, which comes in which place. Uh, my one I often use um, is rabbits mate in a very unusual, expensive gardens. So R-M-I-V-U-X-G. But whatever works for you, you need to remember them in order. Okay, next thing to talk about is if you have a look at the diagram, which part of the spectrum has the lowest and highest frequency? So frequency is the number of waves per second, um, and hopefully we can see that the radio waves has the lowest number of waves in a certain time, whereas the gamma waves, you've got all those waves bunched together. Now the wavelength is the opposite. The highest wavelength is actually towards the left-hand side, which is radio waves, whereas the lowest wavelength, the smallest wavelength, the gap between the waves peaks is in the gamma section and all the ones in the middle are a different range of wavelengths or frequencies. Um, the wavelengths, uh, you need to know their rough uh, wavelengths for each part of the spectrum. So radio is about 10 meters, micro is about 0 0.01, uh, infrared is uh, about um, 0 0.0001. Um, I've written them all in standard form because they get really small. Visible light is 10 to the power minus 7 meters. Ultraviolet is 10 to the power minus 8. X-rays and gamma rays even smaller, minus 10 and minus 12. Uh, an X-ray is roughly the diameter of an atom. Um, as well. So how big an atom is is roughly the wavelength of an x-ray. Okay, so next thing uh, to look at is going to be talking about their uses. So where are they used? Okay, so some of them uh, are easier to remember than others. Um, now, first thing to say is don't say the use is the same as a thing. So obviously, um, you'd say radio waves are used for radio, but if in doubt, say TV, because it uh, doesn't contain the word itself in its use. Um, now, next one, uh, ignore this. Um, thermal cameras are infrared, uh, but microwaves are used for, you can just say generally speaking, Speaking communications, um, so communications uh, that could be anything at all, really phone calls, etc., um, and also cooking in your microwave ovens at home. Infrared is used for thermal cameras or thermal imaging, and also for cooking. So cooking via a heater or electric heater or barbecue is infrared. Uh, visible as well being used used for seeing is for used for fiber optics, fiber optic broadband, etc. Um, UV rays used in sunbeds um, and also used to detect banknote fraud. Uh, medical imaging is the use for x-rays um, it's kind of the obvious one out of this whole list um, and gamma rays are used in radiotherapy so to destroy cancer cells also to um, sterilize medical equipment i.e. to kill bacteria on medical equipment now um, those aren't all the uses, but those are the ones that are listed on your specification, so it's worth knowing. Let's take a look at visible light then. Um, so visible light, uh, as I mentioned at the start of the video, uh, even though really there's six, because you know, indigo and blue are kind of the same color, um, we say there's seven colors to the rainbow, uh, which you do need to know in order. So ROY G BIV is the acronym to help you remember those. Um, so red is the end of the spectrum that has the um, well, it's violet, sorry, the end of the spectrum has the lowest wavelength and the highest frequency, whereas red has the opposite. It has the highest wavelength and the lowest frequency. So it's always good to draw them um, in a kind of waveform, so it help you remember it, um, and you hopefully remember if the wavelength's high, the frequency's low, and vice versa. Excuse my pens there. So high uh, wavelength for red, low wavelength for violet. Okay, and what defines them as visible light? And this is, um, I don't know, a, it makes you think about us as humans, really. Um, we've just evolved um, retinas and eyes um, to detect this part of the spectrum. It's a very narrow part of the spectrum. Um, there are other animals that can detect infrared and ultraviolet. Um, we can't because we've evolved. Uh, we don't need to um, uh, detect any other part of the spectrum, just visible light. So um, that's what defines it as visible uh, to us. 
Okay, so next thing uh, we're going to look at is a little bit more at the uh, kind of low wavelength end of the spectrum and to talk about gamma rays. So um, gamma rays, uh, you might have come across before in the radioactivity topic. Um, now, what they're caused by, and this is definitely a kind of grade 8 or 9 thing, um, is they're caused by electrons moving in an atom, okay, moving between electron shells. So in chemistry, we should know electrons orbit in shells. They can jump between them, and when it goes down from a higher to a lower one, um, a gamma ray is given off. That's a bit of A-level physics uh, used to be there. Now, as well as knowing about gamma rays, um, gamma rays, while we're in that part of the spectrum, are one of the most dangerous parts of the EM spectrum. So these three, ultraviolet, X-rays, and gamma rays, are by far the most dangerous. Now, the reason they're, most, they're the most dangerous um, is due to um, the fact they are all ionizing. Now, ionizing means when they travel through atoms, they make them ions, so ionizing. So it mutates the DNA in cells, um, can cause cancer, that kind of thing um, as well. If you're talking about UV, uh, UV is the main cause of skin cancer um, uh, in the world. What well, it causes skin cancer, um, especially in hot countries. Okay, let's talk about the other end of the EM spectrum then. Let's talk about radio waves. So these are used for TV, radio, communications, etc. Um, and this is higher tier only content for combined or separate science. Um, so let's say we've got a radio transmitter. Your favorite radio station is trying to get its signal out across to the country. Um, how does it do it and how does it reach all the different areas? So you have a mast and it emits radio waves. Um, and the reason radio waves are used is because they have a high wavelength so that they can go over hills and mountains and kind of reach houses and people in very remote, hard to reach locations. So it's because of their high wavelength, they're used to do that. So we're talking about wavelengths about 10 meters, 100 meters, um, etc. They can spread out over hills and between valleys and things like that to be able to get a signal, which is why quite often you can get radio, even if you can't get TV in a certain place, if you've ever been anywhere remote. Now, as well as that, how are radio waves produced? Again, this is a higher tier um, content thing. So let's say you have a transmitter aerial um, from the radio station. Um, in the aerial, it's made of metal. It's got delocalized electrons. Um, now, how these radio waves produced is if there is an AC current or an alternating or oscillating current, the electrons move up and down. And that causes the radio waves to be produced, which I know sounds a bit weird. Um, you might have to look deeper to find out why that's the case. Uh, but these radio waves are emitted um, and then spread out from the aerial. Now, um, let's say then you wanted to detect them. Okay, so you've got you know, a car with an aerial in it, or you've got an aerial at the top of your house, or something like that. How do we detect them? So you need um, a receiver aerial. Okay, so in the receiver aerial, again, it's made of metal, so it's got delocalized electrons. Um, and we call the other aerial transmitter, by the way. Um, but in the receiver, we've got delocalized electrons again. Now, as soon as the radio waves hit those electrons, um, they make them move, they make them oscillate. Okay, so they oscillate up and down, and they oscillate at exactly the same frequency as the radio wave that caused it. So if your favorite song is playing at 10 hertz, the electrons oscillate up and down at 10 hertz as well. So how you'd answer an exam question on it, you'd say the current oscillates or the electrons oscillate at the same frequency as the radio wave that caused it.